Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is a quick video response to uh, circumcision by companionable ills. I just had to point out a few uh, errors or inconsistencies in your video that I thought were very pertinent. Uh, you, one of the things you said that ch children cannot consent um, to getting circumcised, but I don't think that's a very, very valid argument because, given the fact that kids. Um, a few months old, one year old, two years old, three years old, they will say no to a lot of things. They won't consent to, for example, vaccinations. If you know that vaccination um, is a lifesaver, it prevents measles, mumps, rubella, uh, pertussis, uh, diphtheria, hepatitis B, hepatitis A. There's so many things that uh, you know you need to get vaccinated for. So um, now they've come out with the um, virus to prevent cervical cancer. So I don't think that's a very valid argument. Kids will never really consent to anything that might be painful, that might involve pain of any kind. And um, they would also never consent to leaving, some kids would never consent to leaving the house, if not majority of the kids, to go to school, for example. So, but does that, uh, does that mean that they're mentally competent, that they know what they're doing and that um, you need their consent all the times? No, that's absolutely wrong. And three, it's a painless procedure given uh, that uh, anesthesia is used and therefore your argument that it being a traumatic experience for the child and therefore um, it be, uh, mentally s affecting the child, that's uh, not a valid argument because the child doesn't feel pain and um, as far as I know there's no such study to indicate that circumcision is mentally detrimental to a uh, child's well-being. So, I need to stay on track. Um, so basically that's one point. Now they've come out with the uh, cervical cancer vaccination, which uh, they think will prevent, uh, you know, cervical cancer. And um, that is, would you deny your child that vaccination? Would you deny uh, that kind of prevent preventative measure? Now, another thing that you said, um, was that it uh, does not have any significant reduction of sexually transmitted diseases. It doesn't really reduce it that much. That is another uh, wrong statement because uh, according to the New, Euro, um, New England Journal of Medicine, uh, a study was conducted in which 17% of uh, HIV transmission was reduced by simple um, circumcision. So uh, that's another point. I wish I had the article. I wish uh, I had a photocopied it or scanned it or anything so that I could show it to you but unfortunately I don't but that was um, a study which I read beginning this year or la end last year I can't really remember um, so that's just HIV then you have uh, other STDs which it, the rate is tr reduced significantly 17% is a significant reduction in the rate so especially if you consider the fact that man has lived uh, I mean, for the last 1,400 years, there were no barrier contraceptive methods, there were no condoms, there were no any of those things. So this is a very significant preventative measure. And even before 1,400 years, Jews have been doing it as well, circumcision. So I mean, that's uh, it's a very long practice. Another thing that you said, which I'm getting off track, you said that <coughs> male circumcision is comparable to female genital mutilation. I totally disagree with that because, like I was saying, first of all, the organ itself is still functional, the penis is still functional, and it still looks the same. In female genital mutilation, basically what you're doing is that you're cutting off the labia um, minora, the labia majora, you're cutting off the clitoris, and you're cutting off the lower portion of the vagina. So when you do that, you're completely disabling the person for life regarding his sexual or her sexual activity. You are removing the reproductive part which is vital for orgasm for um, lubrication, for, you could say for reproduction, basically. And therefore, it's a very totally different thing. Female circumcision is wrong, completely wrong. Male circum uh, female genital mutilation or circumcision is the same thing. And male circumcision, like I'm telling you, these are the benefits. And um, the organs function is not compromised. And also the aesthetic value is maintained. Now, you also said, this is basically a paper, I wrote everything down, um, the points that you were talking about. 
Also, you say that the parent-child bond is violated. I don't really see how that is violated, especially in the fact that uh, circumcision is done under anesthesia and the child really doesn't know much that is going on. So, unless you have some kind of study to back this up, unless you have some kind of, uh, you know, random trials or whatever, you, then I can't really see how that could be anything close to the truth. You say that... Um, Okay, and apart from that, it also, in uh, neonates, in the first few months of life, it also reduces the risk of urinary tract infection. So, that's another thing. Apart from that, it reduces the risk of uh, uh, penile skin cancer. which even though it's a rare cancer it still is there it still occurs and apart from that it also prevents a certain diseases like um, paraphimosis it also prevents paraphim paraphimosis is basically when uh, the foreskin gets stuck behind the glands of the penis and therefore there's a lot of vascular congestion there's a lot of pain and uh, it's a very t excruciating experience for any guy to go through so and then apart from that um, if you have circumcision, you don't have smegma, which is basically unhygienic uh, accumulation of muco uh, mucus uh, behind the foreskin, in between the foreskin and the glands penis, which is basically a fertilizer, a fertilizing uh, ground for staph aureus, um, uh, urea, urea lima liticus, uh, I can never pronounce that name, but basically it's a fertile ground for bacterial growth. And... Um, I really don't know uh, what else to say. I think uh, it's circumcision has definitely its, uh, you know, finer points. And to argue this on the basis of the child will be mentally traumatized, uh, I don't see that as a valid argument. I don't see uh, a child being scarred for life as a valid argument because there's no such case study done. Um, Yeah, basically, I mean, that's that's all that I can uh, come up with at this point. I couldn't watch your whole video, but I did watch a significant portion of it, and I hope this helps. And uh, take care, everybody. Assalamualaikum.